Hey everyone, this video is about sentiment analysis on a text corpus using the famous Finbart model from Hugging Face. And the basic issue we are going to tackle here is that we know that BART has a max length limit of tokens equal to 512. That is a maximum number of length of token that BERT can take or will accept is 512. So if an article has a length much bigger than 512, then how do I deal with that? And just like in any other problem in software engineering or machine learning, there are a couple of ways to deal with this situation. And here in this video, we will see one of them. So let's start. And initially, my import, the regular ones, BERT for sequence classification and BERT tokenizer. And uh, next, I am going to define my model and tokenizer. So, uh, just like I was saying, I'm going to use this FinBird from Hugging Face. You can check out their official documentation. It's a pretty popular model with, I think, uh, more than 1 million downloads and a reasonable size, something like 420 MB, uh, 450 MB around. So, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to deal with in your local machine setup. All right, now, first thing I'm going to do is um, uh, define a little util function which will uh, do the which will get the predictions let's define it so this function will just take uh, tokens as its argument first get the output these are all regular steps probably you are familiar with if you are using hugging face model so i'm just passing the tokens to the model to get my output now this will give me logits but i need to convert them to probabilities so my probabilities will be equal to torch.nn functional dot softmax output zero over the last dimension deem equal to minus one Now, for the text corpus, I have uh, copied uh, text from a uh, random uh, Google search on Bitcoin regulation. So, this is my text. It's a pretty long one. And what I have uh, what I've done is that I have copied it from uh, this source. So, I've given the source here. You will get it in, the, uh, in my source code in GitHub. So, this is just talking about the future of crypto regulation. And because I'm using Finbert, and that's why I am I was trying to search some news or article related to financial world. So given that text, now I can actually generate my tokens. Because we already defined my tokenizer at the top. Tokenizer.encode plus. At special token, I'm keeping it at false. I will come to this point in a second that why I'm keeping it at false. For now, just um, go ahead and print my token. Oops, I did not run this cell. Yeah. All right, so this is a very large... Uh, very large tensor indeed and we can see that uh, it has got one key uh, as expected input ids and it will also have another key called attention mask uh, actually it will have token type ids as well uh, let's just print the keys so that i can actually check them yeah so i have three keys here input ids token type ids and attention mask uh, let's quickly check the length of the input IDs. Token. 
sorry, that's tokens. That's a really large, 1653, but our BERT model can handle 512. So here is the issue that I was talking about. Okay, now let's um, see that how we deal with it. But first, uh, note that uh, there, like like I was saying, there are uh, mainly two approaches uh, by which this kind of situation is handled. That is when the token token length is much more than what Bird can cover. So the first approach is to using neural text summarization to shorten the text to below 512 tokens. And the second um, approach normally that is used is to create a window, a sliding window indeed, which will slide across the text corpus, which and that window obviously will be uh, less or equal to 512, and then calculate the average of those multiple windows after I slide that uh, window over the entire text corpus. And here in this video, I will be using the second approach, that is the sliding window approach. So the window in question will be a subsection of our tokenized text of length 512. And then I will slide it over the entire uh, 1653 number of uh, token length. And a couple of points to mention here, for example, that uh, during the tokenization, I used add special token equal to false uh, because uh, this will, if I had it, had it true, then this will add CLS, that is a classifier special token, and also the separator, that is a ACP special token, to the start and end of the full tokenized text. But in this case, I do not want that because I'm going to create uh, from this entire text, I'm going to create many uh, windows of text, that is many chunk of text, and then I will add it to each of those chunk at the beginning and at the end, these uh, CLS and the SCP token respectively. But that I will do with a, a separate util function. And also here for this, um, uh, in this case, I will not specify the max length truncation or padding parameters while uh, dealing with BERT, which are like the most uh, uh, most often used parameters while you are working with BERT. Uh, because max length truncation and padding in this particular case will not be relevant. And also we will return a standard Python list rather than tensor by not specifying return tensor. So if I specify, you normally re return a tensor that is either a TensorFlow tensor or a PyTorch tensor. Uh, but in this case, uh, this will make, um, in this case, I would be only returning a normal, regular Python list. And that's why I'm not using return tensor. And um, the, the reason for doing that is mainly because that I'm going to do some manipulation here. And uh, if I initially return a PyTorch tensor, that will be problematic for me. So what I will do after my manipulations are done, then I will convert the regular list back to PyTorch tensor, which you can definitely do. And uh, yeah, so that's a kind of approach I will be following. So, um, and you can check that these input IDs normally are uh, these uh, tokens um, normally are tensor that is if you uh, specify return tensor but in this case we can check that they are not really PyTorch tensor and they are just list by doing this type tokens input ideas yeah that's a list that's how I wanted it uh, yeah so now let's define a couple of variables. Also, I need to do it for attention mask. Uh, yeah, there are some. Cool. And um, so now, yeah, so that's our input IDs. And we can just uh, uh, see again that input IDs are actually what they are. So let's just print the first 10. Yeah. 
So that's uh, that's my input input ideas. Okay, now we will be using uh, some code to break our list into smaller section. And uh, actually, uh, in the this cell, I will be writing some code to just uh, uh, break the entire corpus into different start and end section. That is chunk of uh, text. So first, I need to define uh, starting and ending position and because i'm using finbert and finbert can take maximum of five 512 tokens so i'm going to start at 0th index and my window size will be 512 start equal to zero and the length will be 512 Now get the total length of our tokens. Now initialize uh, a boolean variable because I'll be running a, a loop. So just initialize a boolean variable to control the loop because at some point I need to stop the loop. So all I'm doing in this cell is just um, segmenting the entire text corpus into different start and end. And I just want to see that that's working. So I'll be printing uh, start position, end position uh, for the entire length of the corpus. So that's what this loop is about. So first, uh, the end position uh, will be simply uh, starting from the starting position plus the window length. And if the end position is greater than the total length, make these our uh, that should that's where the uh, looping should end. So if total length I'm setting the loop equal to false so that the while loop will stop executing any further and uh, change our endpoint to the final token position in this case all right total plan okay Uh, this is where the if condition end and now I just want to print the start and end position. And after this, uh, I also need to update the start position uh, because the next start will be the end. That is start equal to end because this is uh, a sliding window. So the ending of the first sliding window will become the starting position of the next sliding window. Okay, now just to run this. Cool. Yeah, so that's how I wanted it. Uh, remember our total length of the, what was the total length? Length of token was 1653 and that's what we are getting at the, when the sliding window ends. Uh, okay. All right, and now I'm going to write the uh, the most important key function in this exercise, and that is uh, the function uh, that I'm going to write now will chunk the text to window size and predict the probabilities by applying the Finbert model on each chunk. So basically, what I'm planning to do is to uh, extract the window from my input IDs and attention mask. Then for each window, I need to add the special tokens of CLS and SCP. That is the classifier token, which is uh, uh, which has a class ID of 101 and also the separator token at the end, 
which is which has a class id of 102 uh, so i have to add the cls and separator token that is cls and scp token at the beginning and at the end of each window and uh, then i also need to uh, add padding for the final batch that is uh, uh, the last window will be shorter than 512 so i need to add padding to make it equal to 512 and uh, yeah so that's pretty much the plan so just um, start the function I'm trying to name it as explicitly as possible, the function name, and so uh, this will become a little larger. I mean, the function name. Uh, chunk text window size and predict probar. And it will take input IDs and net in. First, initialize uh, empty list of uh, probabilities. This is the final return variable that I'm going to return from this function. List equal to an empty list. <coughs> so just like before, I will have a start and uh, end position and also a window length. And my starting position will, so the uh, starting position will start from zero and the first ending position will be start plus window length. And then after one loop, I will update both the start and end again, because uh, as a window slides forward, the start, the second starting position will be the previous ending position. Uh, so it's just a sliding window mechanism that probably uh, many of you have used in other kind of situation. And I am choosing here 510 and not 512 because as we discussed that uh, Finbar takes max token length of 512 but I am skipping space for the two special token that is at the beginning i have to attach a cls special token and at the end i have to attach a separator special token that is acp so the window length will be 5110 and my loop is a boolean variable and start it with true and now i am starting the loop In position is start plus window length. Now, if end is more or equal to um, total length, total length, uh, I think we have already defined the total length here, right? Uh, what is our total length? Yeah, that's a one. Let's just put it as a argument to this method okay in that case uh, i have to stop the loop false and also and okay now that's where now here i have uh, the actual step starting so first I need to extract the input ID chunk and the attention mask chunk, then uh, add the separator and the classifier special token and ultimately uh, get the, and also I need to add the padding and ultimately get the probabilities by feeding the model with the uh, input tokens and attention mask. Uh, yeah, so let's start. The first is step one, which is um define the chunk input ideas i need two um 
grab the items from the input ids list starting from the start position and up to the end that is with a slice notation and similarly attention mask will be mask start to end okay that was uh, step number one step number two is to uh, add the cls append uh, cls and uh, input by this chunk so the for appending the cls we already uh, discussed that the class id for the cls token in finbart is 101 and because input id is a list of all the class id so i have to uh, there is nothing called cls or scp for finbart to recognize for finbart model to rec recognize i need to pass the relevant class id that's how it works input id chunk plus and the class id for SC, uh, scp token is 102 and i need to do the same for attention mask but uh, for the attention mask it's slightly different because attention mask will not have cls or separated token instead they will have one in those places uh, that one means they need to be given attention basically because attention mask is just for masking attention mask chunk plus two sorry uh, plus one again okay that was my step number two and step number three is um, i need to or i just want to uh, define a dict uh, so that uh, so basically i uh, am converting the pytorch tensor to a dictionary format as they uh, need to be in tensor form rather than python list and here i'm also going to convert uh, to correct data type uh, which is uh, a long for the input ids and for the attention mask is the int data type so if oh, um convert to dict convert pytorch tensor tensor to dict In, I'm defining a new uh, dictionary here, input dict equal to torch dot tensor. Uh, yeah, so I'm converting. Uh, sorry, uh, I think I uh, uh, it is opposite what I wrote here. Uh, that is, I need to convert the list to a PyTorch tensor because remember we just discussed earlier when we were tokenizing right at the very top. Where did we tokenize? Let's see. Yeah, here. Uh, so uh, when we were tokenizing with the tokenizer dot encode plus, I did not pass any return tensor, and that means the return keys and the return uh, uh, vector will not will just be a python list that will not be a pytorch tensor with the gradient tree etc and we also checked that by doing this line that is type of tokens input ids that's just a list it is not a pytorch tensor but for my for passing these input id to the model as the input uh, input numerical array i cannot pass a list i need to pass a pytorch tensor because the model will need the gradient tree uh, calculation to be done and hence just as we discussed earlier that later we will be converting our list to tensor and that's what i am doing here so converting my by uh, uh, regular converting regular python list to pytorch tensor yeah, so torch.tensor to that I pass 
and group all these uh, chunk and convert it to long format. Similarly, I need attention mask. And that will also be torch, 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 tensor. And tension mask chunk dot. This is of type int. Okay. And um, what is left is I need to just um, now um, invoke or execute my model. So outputs model. We already have the model defined, so I can just pass it input dict. And that should give me my logits. Um, but I so these outputs is are actually logits, and I need to convert them to probabilities uh, by using softmax. PIL probabilities equal to torch dot in end dot functional sorry dot soft max outputs zero and finally I need to append update my probability list we defined the probabilities probability list right here and that's the variable that I'm going to return from this whole method. So let's update that probability list. And now I'm just going to uh, execute this function. Chunk text to the size. To that I pass input. Mask and also the what was that? Um, I think uh, that's the total length of my tokens. And when I printed this uh, probability list, this is the output that I got. And this is a PyTorch tensor. And here, each of these tensor actually represent a sentiment score for that particular section of the text. And why did I get four of them? Because my long text was divided into four segments and each has a length of 512 tokens. So that's how, I, that's how I got the sentiment score. And of course, I need to apply argmax method on these arrays, individual arrays, to get the, uh, the, get the actual sentiment classification for that section of the, of the text. That is for that chunk of the text. So let's continue doing our work here. Uh, and actually, for my case, uh, uh, I'm going to calculate calculate an average sentiment for the entire text, right? Because that's what we, we want. We can actually calculate the uh, sentiments of the four different chunk or four different segment of the long text. But what you want is, the what which was the purpose of the video, that how to deal with long text when applying BERT. So for my entire text, that is this whole text, I want to capture or get a single sentiment and for that I need to get an average uh, so yeah so let's do that so well pretty much I'm going to uh, stack those individual returned tensor and uh, then get the average sentiment across the full stack full full text so my stacks will be stack list and if I print stacks here so these stacks are just a stacking of all the individual probability list and let's see the output so this is the output that I got from the stacks and um, we can see here uh, so this is the stack on which I need to um, get the mean value 
to get my actual uh, sentiment score that is positive, negative, or neural sentiment or neutral sentiment because Finbert has these three sentiment scores 0, 1, and 2. Uh, and um, what I see here that I cannot directly apply the mean because uh, this is a three-dimensional tensor but as you can see the probab list is a two-dimensional tensor because because of this reason I need to reshape it first so if you just check uh, the shape like this shape equal to stack dot shape and the H A P E the shape will be uh, this 4 1 3 so this is a problem here so I need to reshape it and for reshaping I can use um, this one it is a PyTorch tensor so I can use torch dot reshape remember I cannot just directly use um, uh, the normal uh, Python or NumPy method of resize here because this shape ten these stacks tensor right here has a gradient attached to it so directly applying the resize method of python or numpy will give you an a runtime error saying that um, the resize variable requires uh, we are trying to resize a variable that requires a grad so i need to use torch.reshape if I want to keep the gradient but in a second we will see that uh, from here on I no more need to keep the gradients actually because I'm just doing inferencing I do not I'm not doing any training further so I can actually get rid of the gradient but first check torch.reshape what kind of output it gives TSDK first um, the tensor and then the two size that I want to give and that should be in a form of tuple shape zero i want to keep and shape shape two i want to keep and when you run this you get uh this tensor right here torch dot reshape stacks shape zero shape two will give you this tensor which is two dimensional which uh which is what i needed before i apply mean uh, mean method on them and see that the return uh, return of this method also has a grad function that means it this tensor has all the gradients attached to it and hence what i'm going to do uh, i'm going to define a utility function where i can get rid of the gradients but first again check the shape of the probability list that's this tensor uh, right it has a two dimensional okay let's, let's write now a util function so that I can uh, uh, do uh, three uh, this util function will I am going to do three things uh, first uh, define a context manager with torch.nograd then get my uh, stack from the probability list then resize that stack and finally calculate the mean okay so i'm just doing stacks equal to so these steps we already did it uh, previously but i'm just including everything within a single util function so that i can reuse that again torch dot stack probability list next is to resize them uh, stacks and now I'm going to use the normal resize method because now I am within the context manager of torch.nograd so I do not need to use specific PyTorch specific method uh, I can just use um, stacks dot resize shape zero sorry this is and list and also x dot shape two and finally calculate the mean there will be a s here mean will be just x dot mean and across a dim 
across each uh, across the row row so d equal to zero Later on mean tool and then execute this function so my mean will be get mean from proba to that i pass the proba list and when i execute this function i get this output let's see uh oh yeah i need to actually apply the torch.org max actually this this mean variable will give you an output like this so this is a value of this mean variable which is a tensor and it gives the uh, the individual scores now i need to apply the arg max to get my uh, actual ultimately classy uh, sentiment classification so for the entire text of course so dodge dot arg max just pass uh, just pass the mean variable and then get the item and that will give you the values and when you uh, run that you will get this two so what is two two uh, in the and to understand the two here in finbird i just went to the official documentation of fugging face for finbird this is that page and you go to files and folders and look at config.json and here they have given these uh, labels uh, id to labels so a label of two that means it's a neutral and that's what we got that is torch.orgmax gave us two that is the sentiment of the whole text is uh, is neutral so this overall text so in summary what we did again we just um, uh, we just uh, chunked the entire text into different segments so that no segment crosses more than 512 tokens then calculated our sentiments on each individual chunk of the text and after that we took we uh, stacked those individual tensor that is from the model output and applied mean on the stacked or combined tensor to get the overall sentiment score for the entire text all right that pretty much wraps up this video if you have liked this one smash the like button and also do subscribe because i'm going to do many interesting nlp projects over the coming days and weeks so, see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.